let's talk linear algebra. So suppose we want, we have this system of linear equations and we want to find an answer for it. Um, a system of linear equations is just uh, more than one equation, that's why it's a system. And you'll have variables and you'll have constants. So here, um, the x's are all variables and the a's and b's are all constants. Um, and the, there's no x squared and there's no um, x prime, like the derivative of anything, it's just linear. Um, we just have a system like this. How do we find the answer? Um, this is something you probably learned in algebra or algebra two, um, just ways that you can solve the system. Um, I'm just gonna put real numbers into the system so we can have one to try out for ourselves and figure out. Um, so A1 is just gonna be a one. I'm gonna make A2 a three. I'm gonna make U a five. That's gonna be a two. And this is just gonna be a minus one. And I think you're a three. That's right. Okay. So I'm sitting in my algebra two class and I have to solve what x1 and x2 are in this equation. Uh, one, one way I might do that, um, I might look at these two equations and say, hmm, I can multiply one of these equations by a constant uh, and use that to eliminate one of the variables. Say, I'll multiply this top equation by negative two to get these to match up. Um, so this one will become negative two x1 minus six x2 equals minus 10. And I'll just move two x1 minus x2 equals three over. Now I can just add up these two equations and that becomes a zero. Minus six plus minus one is minus seven x2. Uh, and minus 10 plus three is minus seven. So I'll just get x2 equals one because minus seven times x2 is, I mean minus seven times one is minus seven. And now I can back substitute that one into one of these equations. I'll substitute it into the second one. Um, add that one to both sides. Cool, so that's how I would go about solving that in algebra two. Um, linear algebra starts from the same, um, this same kind of thinking, only we do it with a matrix. Um, and it's actually basically the same thing. Uh, what are the operations that we could do on these equations here? First, I multiply one of them by a constant. Uh, I added the two rows together. And if you'll notice, I also switched around. Um, no, I didn't. But you can also switch around these roll, these, uh, the placement of where they are. Um, to help you figure it out. So when you put this into a matrix, all you really do is you're covering up the variables and just writing the coefficients in the places of a matrix. So here, because this is x, 1x1 plus 3x2 equals 5, I would just write these coefficients 1, 3, and 5. And here I would just write 2, minus 1, and 3. And this basically corresponds to this system. And we can solve the system just by using the same operations we just did. I can multiply a row by a constant because that just corresponds to multiplying an equation by a constant. And I can switch around these rows because that's just like playing around with these equations. It's basically the same thing. And I, I can also add rows to each other, which is basically what I did here when I added two, uh, two equations to each other. So when I go to solve this, I'm just doing the same operations, only this time it's in a matrix. So it's not really that scary. Um, I have another example, so we can try this out with, this time, three variables. And we can solve it in matrix form this time. Uh, so I have 4x1 plus 3x2 plus x3 equals 8. 2x1 plus x2 uh, equals 3 minus x1 plus x3 equals 1, x1 plus 2x2 plus x3 equals 3. All right, so let's try writing this as a matrix. My first row is going to be 
four, three, one, eight. I, um, be sure to watch this because there's no x3 in this equation, but I still want to leave an x3 in my uh, spot in my matrix um, for where it would go, but the constant would just be zero. So that's two, one, zero, and three. That's minus one, zero for x2, one, and one, and that's one, two, one, three. A lot of the time what you'll see in a book is people will put a line right here uh, and that'll separate what we have in the, uh, on this side of the equation from like the answers on this side. Um, so let's go about solving this. We can just use the same operations we've been using. We can switch stuff around, multiply by uh, a constant, or add and subtract rows from each other. So from this first I'm going to rearrange. Uh, I'm going to put this guy at the top. And y will become clear in a minute. In fact, I'm just going to reverse the order of these because I really like this one being second. And then two, one, zero, three. Okay, why did I do that? Um, when we're solving a matrix, it becomes clear it's more of a, a systemized way of solving these matrices than just kind of throwing our equations around. Um, what's really nice is that we want in the top left corner to be a 1, which I have right here. And then going down almost in a staircase pattern, the ideal, we want 1s in each of these. And that will correspond to having x1 equal to this number, x2 equal to that number, x3, and x4. As we work through it, you'll see it a little bit more clearly. Um, so I'm going to take this equation. I'm going to add these two rows to each other because 1 plus minus 1 is 0. So I'll keep the first row the way it is. There we go. I'll add these, and I'll get that 0. 2 plus 0 is 2. 1 plus 1 is 2. 3 plus 1 is 4. Now I'm going to take 2, and I'm going to subtract this twice. So 2 times that. 2 minus 1 minus 1 is 0. 1 minus 2 minus 2. That's negative 1, negative 3. 0 minus 1 minus 1 is minus 2. And 3 minus 3 and minus 3 again is 3 minus 6, or negative 3. Now I'll have 4 minus 4 times 1, which that'll be 0. 3 minus uh, 4 times 2. So 3 minus 8, that'll be negative 5. Uh, 1 minus 4 times 1, that'll be 1 minus 4, or negative 3. Uh, 8 minus 4 times 3, that's 8 minus 12, or negative 4. Again, notice how I'm trying to get zeros in this row, and I want to keep pushing these zeros further and further back. Next, I'm going to try to get a 1 right here. So I'm going to divide this row by, uh, divide this row by 2 right now to get a 1 there. And I'm just going to do it in this matrix to save time. So now it's 1, 1, and 2. Okay, using this row, I can now get rid of these two numbers. Here's uh, negative three. We're going to add this row three times. And so negative three, one, one, one is zero. Negative two plus one plus one plus one. That's going to be one. Negative three plus two plus two plus two. That's 6. That's going to be 3. Now I can have negative 5 plus 5 times 1 is 0. Negative 3 plus, plus 5 times 1 is 2. And negative 4 plus 5 times 2, negative 4 plus 10, that's 6. Now if I look at this, I can immediately divide this last row by 2. 1 and 3. So now I have a duplicate right there. Um, both rows are 1 and 3. Um, so I can just subtract this last row from the second to last row. And I'll get zeros in that last row. Okay, so what this is actually formally called is uh, row echelon form. Um, and as you can see, like I was trying to do at the top, 
have kind of a staircase pattern of ones going down. Uh, and that means this last row right here um, corresponds to x3 equals 3, because these two are zeros. So I'm going to write x3 equals 3. So now I have a value for one uh, of my variables, and I can use that to back substitute and figure out the other ones. Let's think about what this row represents in terms of a linear equation. That's 0x1 plus x2 plus x3 equals 2. So I can just back substitute that 3 in. That's x2 plus 3 equals 2, or x2 x2 equals minus 1. Now I'm going to go back to this first row. And I have x1 plus 2x2 plus x3 equals 3. I'll substitute my values in. x1 plus 2 times minus 1 plus 3 equals 3. That's the same as x1 uh, plus 1 equals 3 or x1 equals 2. So now I've basically gone about the same way I would have solved it if I was just in my Algebra 2 class and I just had the system of equations, only this time I use the matrix. And I think it's a little bit cleaner. Um, I just have the system of numbers that's consistent and numbers aren't flying all over the page and all that stuff. Um, and I have arrived at a rigorous and um, algorithmic solution for this, where I have x1 equals 2, x2 equals a negative 1, and x3 equals 3. This is where linear algebra starts, and it builds off of this. Um, so in the coming videos, you'll see other um, techniques for solving linear, um, linear systems like this, uh, as well as other thing, cool things that we can do with these systems. Um, so check out the other linear algebra videos for more information. Thanks for watching this video. Be sure to check out the rest of the videos in this series and any of the other math-related videos on our channel. If you're not subscribed to our channel, click this link right here. For more help with linear algebra, check out Worldwide Differential Equations with Linear Algebra by Robert McCohen or Elementary Linear Algebra by Bruce Cooperstein. Both are available at an affordable price in digital formats on our website. Just click this link right here.